Hi, welcome to the Knife Farmhouse. I'm Leanne, and if you're new to my channel, I do cooking and baking from scratch, canning and dehydrating videos. If that sort of thing is just you, feel free to subscribe to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be showing you four crock pot meals that are my go-tos during the slow cooker season, which probably should be all year round because crock pot meals are so convenient for when life just gets in the way in the evenings and you just need to chow down and go. Or you've had a busy day in the field and you just wanna come home and have a hot meal ready for you. Up first is salsa chicken. We're gonna make salsa chicken in the crock pot, which is only three ingredients, but I'm gonna splurge and put a fourth one in. First, we're gonna take our spray and spray our crock pot. And I'm using previously cooked chicken from my freezer that I've deboned from drumsticks and made chicken stock with the bones. And I have a video on how I did that and I'll put that in the I carts up above and down in the description box. So we're gonna dump this chicken in. You can use raw chicken from the grocery store or canned chicken. Then we're gonna dump in our home canned salsa. This is Mrs. Wages that I tried last year. We're gonna just dump that in. And some home canned corn. You can also put black beans in here or pintos. But if you just have the first three ingredients, it's quite all right. Then we're gonna put in a block of cream cheese. Then all you have to do is turn on the crock pot and I'm going to put it on low for three hours. And the lid goes on and I've learned to only put the locks on if you're traveling from doing other slow cooker videos. So we'll be back in three hours to see what it looks like. I'm going to serve the chicken salsa over penne. So I have some water boiling and we'll cook that as per directions. And when the three hours is up, we're just gonna take the lid off and mix it well. And this brick of cream cheese just makes it into a nice creamy sauce. I find it so convenient to cook my vegetables in the same water that I cook my pasta in. I mean, you're putting a lot of salt in that water when you cook the pasta, but it makes the vegetables that you cook taste like they're from the restaurant, like they're so good. Yes, honey. Let's get this plated up and get Howard fed. It's hot? Yeah, it's hot. Mm. Well, how is it? Very good. I would like to personally thank Jenny from Jenny Scratch Made Kitchen for inviting me back for a third year to Crocktober. She's also hosting with Tony at Kettle Kitchen this year. And I would 
want you to go check out the other videos in this collaboration and be inspired by crockpot meals. And please leave a heartfelt comment on all these videos to increase your chances of winning one of three crockpots that they'll be giving away on November 2nd at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Good luck, everybody. Next, I'm going to show you my new favorite way to cook ham. This turned out delicious. All right. I got my ham out of the freezer from Christmas. As you can see, it says sell by February 4th of 2023. So it's been in the freezer for a while. So we're going to put it in the slow cooker with some brown sugar and pineapple jam and see what that tastes like. I've already made sure that the ham fits into the slow cooker. I just had this feeling it was going to be a tight squeeze, and it is. So I'm going to take the wrapper off, and we'll place it in the slow cooker. Maybe I should check to see if the lid will fit on, too. Huh. We might have a problem, Houston. Since I like to make my life hard and I decided just to use my bread knife and just cut the top off. But in hindsight, I think I should have just turned it the other way. What do you think? But I think it gave me a vehicle to put that jam on top and that brown sugar. So I'm loosely putting on the brown sugar. Then I'm going to add my homemade pineapple jam and I use the recipe from Noreen's Kitchen. And I'm telling you, it is some wonderful jam. Then I cooked it on high for at least six to, six to eight hours. And you want to make sure the temperature reaches 165 degrees before serving. And Howard, he didn't tell me that he was going away that evening. So he didn't get home until 11 o'clock. And I did not feel feel like filming him trying it. But I'm telling you, it was the most juiciest ham I've ever had in my life. So I will be making this again this way. I usually cook my ham in the oven roaster just to free up the oven for other dishes. Let's make Howard's favorite meal, Pennsylvania Dutch ham loaf. To make ham loaf, you're going to need one pound of ground beef, one pound of ham chopped in the food processor, two eggs, one cup of milk, and one cup of breadcrumbs, a quarter cup of brown sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of ground mustard. Now I'm going to take my breadcrumbs and soak them in the milk for at least 10 minutes before I start and give them a good stir. First, we're going to add our meats together and add our eggs, one at a time. Then add the breadcrumbs that have been soaked in the milk. Next, we'll use our fork and mix well to combine. Then we'll add our brown sugar and our two tablespoons of ground mustard and our half a teaspoon of salt. Then we're going to use our fork and mix well again. I'm going to spray my crock pot before we get started and make sure nothing sticks to it. Then we're going to just take our bowl of meat and just plop it in there. I'm trying to shape it into an even shape. That way it all cooks through it all at the same time. Then we're going to cook it on low for four hours. Now we're going to make our sauce for our ham loaf. We're going to pour in a third cup of water, a half cup of vinegar, a cup of brown sugar, tablespoon of mustard, now crack 
fresh pineapple is optional in this. So I'm just going to use some pineapple jam that I have sitting around my refrigerator. The jar has only been open, I think, three days. Well, I put it on some ham, I guess. So we're going to bring this to a boil. Then we're going to pour it on our ham loaf. Maybe I should get a whisk. You want to bring this to a boil over medium heat. All right, now that it's to a boil, we'll pour over the ham loaf. And it's been about four hours since we started this process, so it has another two hours yet to cook. It needs to reach a temperature of 155 because we have raw hamburger in it. We're starting with raw hamburger, and it's at least 180 degrees so I could consider that hot. So we're going to turn off our hot crock pot and we'll slice it up and put a plate on it. Very good. So you want one of it again? Yeah. Do you like it in the slow cooker or would you rather it in the oven? It don't matter to you. Mm -hmm. No. You don't know? What'd you do it the last time in? The oven. This is better. Saving the best for last is beef and broccoli. I just love this, especially since we can't get Chinese food here. We're going to make beef and broccoli in the slow cooker. You're going to need two pounds of stew meat or sirloin cut into thin strips. We're going to use about a package of store-bought broccoli but this is my homegrown broccoli. And We're going to need a cup of bone broth. This is homemade that I froze. And We're going to need a half a cup of soy sauce or liquid enos. That's what I make using. A quarter cup of brown sugar four to five cloves of garlic. You do garlic math like I do. Then we're going to need a tablespoon of sesame oil and we're going to need four tablespoons of cornstarch with four tablespoons of water and I'm going to add a tablespoon of ginger just because I love that flavor with these flavors as well. And I'm going to serve this over couscous which I'll show you later how I cook that. So we're going to add our one cup of beef broth to our slow cooker insert, half cup of soy or liquid enos sauce, one quarter cup of brown sugar, then we're going to add our minced garlic, one tablespoon of sesame oil, 
this really gives it a whole different depth of flavor. So if you really need this oil in there. And then I'm going to add ginger. Let's go with a half a tablespoon. Then I'm going to mix the flavors up together. All right. Then we'll cut up our meat. Anytime I'm working with meat and there's lots of juices coming out of the bag, I use a cookie sheet underneath my cutting board just to save a mess. Yuck. Then I'm going to cut this into thin strips. that are nice to chew on <laughs> and you want a sharp knife for this job all right now that I have all my beef cut up we're just gonna place it in the slow cooker I have stir fry meat in the freezer but this was up here in my freezer in my refrigerator so we'll just ease this up. And with my clean hand that I just washed, we're going to coat this. I've seen other recipes coat the beef with cornstarch before you add it. Well, we'll see. All right, then we are going to put a lid on it. And we're going to put it on low for four hours. Then we'll be back. I'm preparing couscous along with the beef and broccoli this evening. It is so simple. Just boil some water, add some butter, and pour in the couscous. Then put a lid on it and let it sit for five minutes. If you're not familiar with couscous, it's little tiny pasta. And after it's sat for five minutes, all you have to do is take the lid off and fluff it up and it's ready to serve. Let's plate some of this up, make sure we get our husband fed here since he's probably exhausted by now. I've made this recipe many, many times and it never gets old with me. I've even taken this to church and the ladies just love it. Well, do you like it? Yeah, it's good. Remember, God gave you a great day. Now go do something great. If you made it this far into the video, I'm sure you're loving the content of this channel. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram for more great content. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and God bless.